and welcome back to another episode of the Nitty Bitty uh, Nitty Bitty Nitty Bit Nitty Bitty Bum Bum is what came to my brain. <laughs> welcome back to the Nitty Bit of Happy Podcast. It's been a couple of weeks since I've chatted it up with you guys. I feel like everything I'm saying is wrong. Also, I forgot my coffee. Oh, we are off to a fantastic start here today. I am so excited to be sitting down and talking with you all today. Uh, I knew I wanted to record today. I have lots of things to talk with you about. Not as much knitting as I thought. I thought when I was going to talk with you all, I was like, oh my gosh, I have so much to share. And I feel like I really don't, but we'll see. I'm sure it'll take up a good amount of time. So today is October 28th. It is Monday. I'm hoping to have this up today, but we'll have to see how that goes. This is very cold, but it's actually good. Um, I don't have a microwave, so when it's cold, it's cold. It's either I drink it or I dump it out, and this is surprisingly delicious. It is pumpkin spice creamer, uh, the silk almond pumpkin spice creamer, and it is delicious. So for my pumpkin spice lovers, uh, the Starbucks pumpkin spice latte is actually not, you're not able to make that vegan because it's a pumpkin spice dairy blend or whatever. So there's no way to make that vegan. And the one day I went to Starbucks, I really wanted to try the pumpkin cold brew. They were out and I just haven't been to Starbucks since, but I was at Target and I walked past and I saw the pumpkin spice creamer uh, Silk is like the almond milk brand and I tried it and I was like, oh my gosh, it's actually really good. It smells like a pumpkin pie. So I've been drinking this very often. It's different because I usually only drink one. I felt like I slurred that. I usually only drink one pumpkin spice latte a year and this has given me the option to have pumpkin spice coffee like every day and it's actually been pretty good. I've been super happy about that. Um, yeah, let's get into the knitting. I realize I'm just ranting about other things, but I have some non-crafty things to share with you all as we work through the podcast. So let's go for works in progress. I'm still, no, I'm not still. I'm not even going to lie to you guys. I haven't picked this shawl up in a few weeks. Um, to be honest, I think the last time I even touched it was, um, when I told you guys I was going to be adding in some yellow yarn. Um, I haven't been able to find the pattern that I printed out for it, so uh, I could easily print another one out, but I'm hoping today I can find it because I have some cleaning I have to do, and I really want to finish this now that I'm looking at it. I really want to finish it, um, but I've been starting some other projects, so for me, I've been a little bit distracted with my other whips um, but now I'm looking at that and I'm like, I really want to finish it. So what I'm going to do is, um, let's see where we're at in this. There's just string everywhere. So I'm making sure my cat didn't ruin it. I'm currently in a, uh, just a garter row pattern. And I think I'm going to rotate like every other row, uh, is blue, yellow, blue, yellow, and then just gradually, um, transition into the yellow because I only have about this much yarn of the blue and I'm only halfway done with this so there's no way I'm gonna finish it in just the blue which I was kind of hoping to do but I see the blue and yellow together and I do like that however when I look at it I think of Michigan colors I am a football fan um and I am not a Michigan fan, so it does look that way to me, but it also looks like a very cozy um, transition into fall and winter. So I'm going to have to look past the Michigan colors and just see how it turns out because I really think it's going to turn out very, very cozy once I finish it. <laughs> so still working on that. Um, I am working on some things for the girls to get them set up for winter because they don't have any handmade knits from me and I feel like because I can knit I should make them things uh, so I am working on this it's like the world's simplest knitting pattern uh, by tin can knits and I finished the hand so a little bit of stockinette 
um, I haven't done the ends or anything, but I haven't finished the thumb because <laughs> I don't know how. Um, I need to look it up on YouTube because reading the pattern is a little confusing for me, so I need to look up how to kind of work the thumb. Um, this was actually a very simple pattern to follow up until the thumb, and I'm sure once I figure out the rhythm of it, the rest of them are going to be super easy. Um, I'm going to make all of the mittens in this color for the girls because they have the same hat. They have that pumpkin hat I showed you. Um, I'll actually show it to you guys again. In, well, I'll show it to you guys now because <laughs> I weaved in the end, so I was going to call it like a legit finished project. Um, this was the hat pattern. This was a test knit for Hookenstein. Cute little pumpkin hat with the pom poms. Um, the girls have been wearing these, and I will insert a picture if I can find one um, because the girls went to a pumpkin patch this weekend and they went trunk or treating with their grandparents. So. They wore these out and about all weekend, but now since it is getting quite cold here today, it's only 30 degrees and it's only supposed to get to 37, I really need to get a move on with these mittens so that their little hands don't get so cold. So um, yeah, I have one of four done. So two pairs for them and then eventually I'm going to make a pair for myself as well. Um, because this is such a simple knit and I usually wear gloves, but I would love to wear mittens. That just feels like such a cozy thing and I've really been into just like a cozy mood lately. Um, so that's been really nice to be able to like actually make things and the girls look so cute in their hats uh, and they're very thick and warm. I don't have to worry about... A cheap hat um, getting ruined within a week of having it and uh, yeah I do still have one more pumpkin hat I need to make for uh, my niece and I have to send it their way yet I haven't really told them that I'm making it for them because I thought it would be a fun surprise but I'm running out of time because it's almost November yikes um, which reminds me I do want to put some ideas together for what I want to knit um, in the next coming months. I, I do want to knit stockings for the kids, um, but every time I look at patterns I get a little bit intimidated because it's, um, they look complicated. And I'm sure they probably are, so doing a complicated pattern isn't the worst thing because then I get to learn um, new stitches, new techniques, and uh, it's always a good excuse to buy new yarn. Um, but I know I need to knit a couple of things for myself that will hopefully last for a long time as far as like winter stuff. Um, I talked with you guys a few weeks ago about some of the yarn that I found and I need to knit Justin his hat yet. Um, so yeah, it's just a matter of getting all that stuff done so that in the next coming years when it's winter time I might not be working on things for us. Um, this year it's been kind of nice to knit things for ourselves because then I get to see like the gratification of like people I love wearing the things that I've made for them. So yeah, um, I'm just really grateful that I can create something with a bunch of love and happiness in it and uh, joy and then they get to wear it and maybe they get to feel a little bit of that love and joy when they wear it. Um, yeah, just little, little things. Um, okay, so on to the next whip. I started this mm, two days ago and I am kind of just going with my normal hat pattern. I changed the brim up a little bit and I'm really hoping I like the fit of it when it's done because this is for me. Um, it's just a simple hat and I'm, I am in love with these colors. I am so so deeply in love with these colors. This is more of like a red. It's coming out as a brown. Um, it's more of like a really dark red, but I love these speckles and they match the brim so well. It's just so, I love the feeling of this. I usually don't knit a brim like this. I was going to try and knit a foldable brim, so like probably like eight inches that you could fold it. Um, but I was running out of this color and I really need a hat because again it's getting cold and I need a hat. So I just kind of went with the longer brim um, 
and if it's a little slouchy on top that's okay I typically prefer um, either like a a beanie style hat with like the short brim or the foldable um, brim with like a more winter cap style but I think I'm gonna like this I think this is gonna be good the only issue I again run into this hat is I want to knit myself some mittens and some and a scarf so I do need to order some more of this this yarn the red burnt red yarn this is knit picks wool of the andes tweed the and garnet heather uh, it is 80% Peruvian Highland wool, 20% Donegal weed. Uh, it's a worsted weight. And um, yeah, I, I'm loving the way this is knitting up and it's such a quick knit. If you guys have been watching, you guys know I love hats. So that's just really fun for me to put together. Um, and it's for myself. So I've been knitting a lot for other people. I've been knitting the shawl that I've been working on forever so I haven't really had that like yay this is for me I can wear it now um I haven't had that yet but I'm really hoping that that happens with this hat and then I need to go to my local yarn shop to find something similar to this and then I'm going to order some more of this so I can make a matching hat and scarf I think for the mittens I'm going to do the tin can knits pattern again and I'm going to do this as like the cuff and this as the hand I think it'll be really cool. And then the scarf, I'm not sure if I'm going to do, um, like, stripes. I'm not a huge fan of stripes, um, but I think it would be cool to do something different. Because um, I thought about doing, like, one end this color, the middle this color, and then the other end this color. And then I thought about maybe trying to do a thinner... Um, color of this kind of yarn and knit them together so it's nice and chunky but I have not really decided what I want to do yet um, especially since this has the speckle that matches this I just I'm not I'm not 100% sure what the scarf might be but I need to get more yarn for myself um, which is okay because I haven't gotten any yarn in a while the last time I got yarn was for this pumpkin hat so I think it's totally necessary to get more yarn, right? I agree. Um, so that's it for whips. I do, <laughs> I've been kind of knitting dishcloths and I really, really need to knit more because the ones that I have um, really need to be washed, but I kind of just want to have like 100 dishcloths, which I know is kind of ridiculous, but I'd much rather make them myself than um, purchase them especially since the knit ones that I have will last for quite a long time. I just need to get my butt together and make them, but I've been having so much fun making other things that um, dishcloths are just so, so easy. So I'm like, oh, I could do that in like an hour, but it's taken me like two weeks to get one done. Um, so yeah, let's talk about my one and only finished object. It was the Tess Knit. Um, for Blue Daffodil Crafts. This hat is gorgeous. It came out really cute. Um, I can't remember if I showed it to you guys since I've started it because when I talked to you all about it, the yarn that I had chosen for it wasn't right for me. And uh, then I had trouble with the, the hat itself because I couldn't read a pattern properly and now it's done and I had so much fun knitting this up I'm sure I will be knitting these again because it was just such a lovely knit anyway uh this hat is so cute so easy even for a beginner and um she has an amazing tutorial on how to follow along with the pattern if you have any questions um and she's super kind so I'm sure you could reach out to her as well all of the proceeds for this pattern aside from listing fees is uh, we'll be going to St. Jude's um, for research, so I think that's really amazing as well. Um, so this is the hat, and check out these flowers. Let's see if we can get it to focus. These were so much fun to make up, um, and it's fun to watch them as you go up the hat, um, and especially with a color like this, I would totally make this hat again in a solid color or something similar to this that has the little speckles in it because I just think it's so much fun. Um, 
So I'm definitely going to make another hat like this in the future. Um, this one's a little small for anybody in our house, so this might be a gift for someone in the future. Um, but I just had a lot of fun making that hat. Uh, it was fun to be a test knit. I still need to put my project up on Ravelry. I am terrible with Ravelry. I just learned that you can also put like the type of yarn you have at home on Ravelry. So I really need to um, get my butt in gear when it comes to Ravelry. And then the other finished object, which I think I've shown you guys before, I finished it a while ago, but I've been wearing it a lot lately, is this hat. Um, this is kind of the beanie style hat that I like and I was going to make this hat into a beanie style until I felt this yarn and this is so chunky and thick that it felt like it would be great with a longer brim. So I've been wearing this hat. I was going to wear it today but I realized it doesn't match <laughs> my very blue shirt so I just thought I would show it to you guys. Um, it is a Packer, Green Bay Packer inspired hat. Again, I really like football. Um, we actually watched the football game last night and the Packers did win, so that was a good thing. I like good football games. So that's kind of all I have for knitting. Um, I wanted to show you guys a couple of other things that are not knitting related, um, but if you were just here for the knitting, Thank you so much for hanging out. Don't forget to subscribe if you are not already and give this a thumbs up so I know that you guys are liking what I'm putting out. Thank you all so much for hanging out. And if you are here for the other things, let's get into it. So um, this past weekend, I had a vendor show. I do sell Scentsy and I'm going to put in some of the footage from the amazing Airbnb. Oh, it's not an Airbnb. That's not the word I meant. It's an inn. It's called the Autumn House Inn. It's in Osceola, Wisconsin, and it is a beautiful place. The house was very vintage, had amazing design. The views were incredible, and just the way that the place was put together was lovely. I only got the upstairs because there were tables set up um, on the main floor, so it was kind of hard to get around and get some of the footage that I would have liked to get. Um, I didn't realize, it's so silly, it's called an inn, but I, I didn't even realize that this would maybe be like what it was, and it was just such a gorgeous place. The owners were so lovely, and it was a pleasure to go and hang out there for a couple of hours. Um, and meet some other people who were working their businesses as well and um, it was just a really fun time and we didn't have the kids this past weekend so after our show we went uh, grocery shopping and I found a plant and um, I have a little bit of a brown thumb. I'm trying to make it green especially because we'd love to become more sustainable and grow our own food um, so I need to kind of improve my plant tending skills. Um, so I saw this succulent and I got it. It was only like five or six dollars and it came in this gorgeous gigantic pot. So here she is. She is beautiful. I really like the pot um, and it's just a really cute plant so I'm hoping that we can keep her well and yeah. This is already pretty dried out. I've watered it pretty consistently since we got her, but I think when you get plants from like grocery stores and stuff like that, you just have to tend to it a little bit more because their main focus isn't making sure that the plants live and I'm pretty sure they probably just throw them out, which is quite sad because even like, yuck, we don't want that. So yeah, uh, very cute. It looks like, oh, it looks like she's already growing off a little sister which is awesome, very cool. This is my first plant in a while, so um, yeah, she was inspired by a friend, so we're gonna keep an eye on her, make sure she stays nice and healthy. We also went to get dinner, we ordered sushi, we we're gonna take it home, and uh, the wait was quite a while, because it was a Saturday night, and Justin and I usually don't have a free Saturday night, so we kind of made it a, little pseudo date night and we ordered sushi um i love sushi but i am vegan so i get a lot of vegetable sushi but it's still delicious 
and the wait for our sushi was probably like 25 minutes so where we were is kind of like the downtown area for that town city and so we were gonna just walk up and down but we passed the bookstore and I love bookstores it was a new bookstore no, okay it wasn't a brand new bookstore it was a book with a bookstore with new books I am a lover of um, used books I love secondhand books I prefer to always buy secondhand pretty much anything anyway but we went into this bookstore it was so cool they had so many good books um, and it was fun to go inside because I usually am an advocate for the library I love going to the library but it's fun to go into a bookstore every now and again and um, I was watching Hannah McNeely and if you've never watched her before I'm gonna link the video that I watched of her Harry Potter costume she put together I won't spoil who it was but it is so good and she's a huge Harry Potter fan so when I was in the bookstore I was like you know what I don't own any of the Harry Potter books so I found it in the middle school reading section of the bookstore which made me laugh because I'm pretty sure I was in sixth grade maybe sixth or seventh grade maybe earlier gosh I'm excited to read it I might start it before I finish the book that I'm reading right now which goes against everything I stand for <laughs> I usually have to read one book at a time or I will not finish the book that I'm reading um but I'm so excited to read Harry Potter because it's been a really long time since I have read the Harry Potter books. I mean, I'm talking years, a lot of years. And feels like a good season to do so, especially with the crisp air and just that in between of fall and winter. I feel like that's the best time to get your Harry Potter on. So I'm really excited to read that. Um, I'm probably gonna go ahead and buy all of them eventually. I think I'm gonna buy them as I read them. Um, and then I can just have them and they're great girl they're they're great books to have for when the girls get old enough to start reading um, on their own and I feel like it's just a staple to have in your house the Harry Potter books and I don't have them um, I've actually been getting into reading a lot more lately and it's something I've been trying to do for a while so I've been trying to pick some time every day to read I think reading is a habit just like a lot of things in life so I need to remember to read because I love fiction. I have a dream of writing a book myself one day and I think in order to do that I need to continue to um, feed that creativity in myself by reading other people's works. Um, so I <laughs> this is just fun for me. I was about to go to bed and I was like you know what I'm gonna read for a little while and I grabbed the first book I just went into my closet I didn't even look I just grabbed a book and I picked up Stephen King Carrie um, I have only ever gotten to a certain point in this book I have seen the movie um, I was way too young to have seen it and I never read the book and I remember seeing this half priced and gently used so I bought it and I've only ever gotten to a certain point and then I've stopped so I'm on page 31 and I'm really hoping to finish it like by the end of this week uh, I think there's only yeah, it's like 190 pages that's not bad at all so if I keep reading this every night before I go to bed should be fine uh, yeah so speaking of books based on or movies based on books and stuff like that let's talk shows I really I really love watching um, series and I haven't really watched any really good movies lately so if you guys know of any good movies I really like um, thrillers I like murder mysteries I like suspense movies and I like dramas I do like dramas Justin likes funny movies so if you guys know of any funny movies we can watch together drop them in the comments because I'm always like ugh, I don't want to watch a funny movie and then I'm watching it and it's not that bad so yeah but we did watch um living with yourself that's the netflix series with paul rudd it was crazy it was really crazy up until the end of the first season and the last episode was kind of like really i don't know if they're gonna do another season if they do i'd be shocked on how they decided to go into a second season but sorry my neighbor is, i'm just watching my neighbor creepy I know probably a little anyway um yeah so 
Living With Yourself, pretty good show, because Justin and I finished watching Mad Men. I don't know if I said that to you guys since I last talked to you guys. Um, and he and I were super disappointed with how Mad Men ended, but I feel like it just, they knew that their show was ending, so they had to tie up all the loose ends and they did a terrible job at it, I think. So then we watched the Paul Rudd series because I saw a preview for it, I was like, that looks crazy. And it was, it was really weird. It was written really well and the um, plot was pretty good, but just the ending just threw me off. I didn't really like it. Uh, and then I was on Hulu catching up on my shows because I don't have cable, so I watch all the shows that I watch the day after. So shows that I watch that are airing right now, I watch This Is Us, um, A Million Little Things, which I'm like kind of not impressed with this season. Um, Grey's Anatomy, How to Get Away with Murder. Those are the shows that I watch um, throughout the week. And How to Get Away with Murder is crazy. Grey's Anatomy is also kind of crazy, but boring. It's been on so long. I'm watching it because I'm committed. I've watched it so long that I need to know how it ends. And I guarantee you there's probably only like one or two seasons left on that show. Anyway, getting distracted. The reason that I was talking about Hulu is because I was finishing up some of the shows that I was watching for the week and I saw Looking for Alaska. Now, friends, if you like to read and if you like John Green, so like The Fault in Our Stars, An Abundance of Catherines, Will Grayson, Will Grayson, um, Paper Towns, Looking for Alaska is so good. It's one of my favorite John Green books. John Green is a little bit more young adult, but I think he's on the cusp of young adult and like adult. He is totally, he's amazing. His writing is incredible. I really, really appreciate everything he puts out. I didn't read Looking for Alaska for the longest time because my roommate's little sister told me it was terrible and for whatever reason I just went with that. Um, and it does take a while to get into, kind of, but once you're in it, like, you cannot stop. I, and it's way more my style of reading and I loved it. I have it, I believe I have it, and I'm considering reading it again because I saw the series on Hulu and I watched the first episode and was immediately hooked. It was like being put into a time warp and just going backwards because when I read Looking for Alaska, I believe I was living by myself and I just fell in love with all of the characters and I was so heartbroken and happy and angry and just like I felt all of the things. So I didn't want to watch it because you know, sometimes you watch a show or a movie and it's not as good as the book. That has not been the case so far. The first episode already was like, yes, Pudge, Miles, blah, blah, blah. It was great. Um, so definitely watch Looking for Alaska. If you haven't read it, read it first. Anyway, so if you haven't read Looking for Alaska, definitely read it first. You can get it from the library. You can probably get it from a used bookstore for pretty cheap. Um, Ebook, whatever you prefer. I really like physical books and if I listen to an audiobook I'm very picky about the narrator um To Kill a Mockingbird is my favorite audiobook ever and uh Park and Eleanor is a pretty good one anyway uh nap time is over so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up and it's always a pleasure hanging out with you guys as always thank you so much for hanging out and we'll see you next time bye bye